guys, welcome back to my channel for another Vlogmas video. My name is Franny and today I'm going to do my November wrap up. In the month of November I read three books and listened to two audiobooks and for the first time I think on my channel I'm going to go in order from least favorite to the books that I liked the most because there are two books that I really really hated and I just want to get them out of the way because uh, one of them is an Italian book and I don't know if you guys are interested in hearing me talking about Italian books that haven't been translated into English so let me know in the comments if that is something that you would like me to do or if you don't want me to talk about them in my wrap-ups let me know in the comments for this one I'm just gonna go with it because I didn't like it and I'm going to try and be very quick about it. The title is Nella Vita degli Altri by Michele Bravi. The translation would be In the Life of Others, I guess. Um, he is a songwriter and I like some of his songs and when I saw that he was coming out with a book I was hesitant because usually, you know, when famous people write books they don't tend to be that good. But in this case, I decided to make an exception because I read the synopsis and it actually seemed very interesting. And I decided to give it a chance and good lord, I wish I hadn't done that. Basically in this book, there's an apartment building and at its ground floor, there's a bakery that is owned by the owner of the apartment building. He is an old man that lives at the last floor and one night, all the other people that live in this building start hearing loud noises coming from his apartment. They decide to go and check out if he's okay, if there's a burglary going on or whatever. And the problem is that this old man cannot see his reflection anymore and he thinks that one of the people who live in his building stole his reflection. And so he forces them into his apartment, starts waving his gun, threatening them to give his reflection back and stuff just goes mad from there. Honestly, I don't know what the point of this book was because I didn't get it. I think that the author wanted to try an attempt to write something philosophical, introspective, kind of. Too many random things happened that were, you know, just too excessive for the whole situation that was going on and what really annoyed me and made me quite angry if I have to be honest is something that the author did basically there are five characters besides the owner of the apartment building and for each of these characters the author tells us about their past their backgrounds and how that past made them become what they are today and so there was this direct correlation between what happened to them in the past, what trauma they had to deal with, and how they were in the present. I'm not saying that what happens to us doesn't somehow affect us, but it doesn't completely shape us. There are many things, many factors that make us what we are. And thank God that that's the case because otherwise all people that were bullied when they were younger or people who lived traumatic events would grow up to be monsters. And that's just not the case. That's not what happens. I mean, all the characters were just two-dimensional and I just it didn't work for me it was really really bad the other book that I really really hated is a French modern classic kind of thing and it is The Life Before Us by Roman Guéry I think since it's French this book wasn't just terrible it was insulting and it was racist and it perpetuated the idea that women are always a step, if not more steps, below men. Which is just the cherry on top, you guys. This book is narrated from the perspective of a child. I think that he is seven, eight years old, something like that, and he is the son of a prostitute and this book is set like in the 60s I think so in those times in France there was this law that stated that 
prostitutes could not have kids and that prostitutes were committing a crime because you couldn't be a prostitute according to the law. And for that reason, his mother left him with an older woman and she pays her to take care of his child. And so this old woman has kind of a refuge for all the children of prostitutes. And this book is mainly about the relationship between the two of them. And it was just a huge no for me. First of all, it was so goddamn slow nothing happened and I just didn't get the point of what the child was telling us why are you telling me that specific event that happened to you and not something else why is that relevant to the story and considering that it was narrated from a child's perspective it was just so vulgar and there was this sentence that just sealed the deal for me and I'm just, I'm so uneasy even thinking about it. I just, I can't tell you that sentence. Like, I cannot, I cannot even read it to you because it was just so bad. But let's just say that it's a sexual thing and there's an adult telling to our main protagonist that it is okay if this sexual thing is done to women, but it cannot be done for men because that wouldn't be manly enough. I couldn't. I couldn't. Just no. Just no. Just no. Just no. Okay, the, the worst is behind us. Let's get to some better books. Lair of Dreams by Liba Bray. Lair of Dreams is the second installment in a YA paranormal series by Liba Bray and it is set in the 1920s in New York. It revolves around diviners. The diviners are people who have superpowers of different sorts. There are some who can read objects, others that have visions, others that can heal people who are sick and so on and so forth and they use these powers to fight ghosts and evil and other paranormal entities. In this specific book they are trying to find the cure for the sleeping sickness. People who get the sleeping sickness fall asleep and they start dreaming and then their dreams transform into nightmares and they become prisoners of these nightmares and they never wake up. I enjoyed it and I think that that was mainly because of the audiobook and of General Lavoie's performance because that woman, oh my god, she can narrate the hell out of these books. She's just out of this world. She does different voices, different accents, she sings in different voices and different accents, but the book itself suffered from the second book syndrome. It was way too long and it dragged on way too much not much happened. I didn't feel the terror that seized me in the first book and that might be because the enemy in this book acted in dreams whereas in the first book you had a serial killer running around so you know it felt more dangerous and scary and in this book I wasn't scared at all. What this book was extremely good at was building up my expectations for the third book because there are a lot of hints and clues dropped here and there of huge things that are going to happen in the third and for now last installment in this series. The third book is going to be explosive, like there is going to be one bomb dropped after the other, there's not going to be time to breathe, I am quite sure of that because of all that was, you know, building up in this book. But this book didn't have much to it, so I still enjoyed it because of Liba Bray and because of the characters and all that stuff, but in the end it wasn't nearly as good as the first book had been. I'm obviously still going to read the third book because shit's gonna go down in that one, but this one, meh. Next, I read A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. This is the first book in the All Souls trilogy, and this is another paranormal series set in our times. I just loved this book so much. I'm not going to tell you anything about it right now because I filmed a video review of this book where I also talk about the TV show, which is actually what made me decide to read the book because I watched the TV show first and then read the book and loved both of them. I might upload it tomorrow, we'll see, but stay tuned because it's coming soon. 
And last, but certainly not least, I listened to the audiobook of Number 11 by Jonathan Coe. Ah, oh, gosh, this book is brilliant. It was written beautifully, it was genius, it was so thought-provoking and so well-built and I just loved it so so much and it made me fall in love with Jonathan Coe and now I want to read everything that he's written and he's written quite a few books so I have stuff to read and that makes me happy. The story opens with Rachel. She is a 20 something years old woman and we immediately see that she is scared of something. She thinks she's going crazy and to try and understand what's going on, to try and make sense of it, she starts writing about her life and what led her to that moment. She starts telling us about a summer when she was a child when she went to visit her grandparents with a friend of hers and from that moment on the book is a series of different episodes that can stand on their own but they are also all interconnected because each episode has different characters and they are all somehow related to Rachel but not necessarily in direct ways. For instance, there's a story that is told from Alison's perspective. Alison is the friend that she went with to visit her grandparents that summer. There's a story from Alison's mother's perspective. Another story, which was my favorite, is narrated by a policeman and he is investigating the accidental deaths of two stand-up comedians, but he thinks that these two comedians were actually murdered because they're there are some similar aspects in the way in which they were killed and during their performances they had both heavily criticized a conservative journalist and so he thinks that this journalist might have something to do with their deaths. In this story the connection was between the journalist and Allison who is Rachel's friend so it's just it's a web of relationships and coincidences and accidental events and what blew my mind away is not just how well written this book was but each episode each story deals with a different issue in our society in fact jonathan co uses these episodes to discuss homosexuality and how it is seen and perceived in our society and how people can be irrationally against it. He talks about how communicating through social media is affecting people's relationships, how on the internet we take advantage of our anonymity to be rude and mean and to attack people when face to face we wouldn't have the courage to say the same things. He talks about food banks and the health system and politics and vagrants. There's so much more but it doesn't feel like there's too much. He takes his time with each and every one of these issues. Mind you, it's not a collection of essay, it's still fiction, so he doesn't dig too deep in each and every one of them, but he still talks about them in a delicate yet firm and realistic way. And in the end, the circle closes and we go back to Rachel and what she was afraid of and he still had some surprises in the end and things that I had not seen coming and it was just incredible and I loved it so so much and I cannot recommend this book enough. This is going to be one of my favorites of 2018 without a doubt and I need to read something else written by Jonathan Coe because he's just amazing. So this was it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books, if you would like to. If you have read something by Jonathan Coe, let me know in the comments where I should go from here because I have The Accidental Woman, which I think is his debut, but you know, I don't know where to go from here. Like, what book by him should I read next? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you soon tomorrow in another Vlogmas video. Warm hugs!